Hey guys, Ravi here. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to talk about uh, bridges, which I said I was going to do like two nights ago now. Um, I was probably an audible slap there. <laughs> oh, uh, and first night I had a proper excuse. Uh, I, my mate was down from Darwin and he was, uh, got this like shooting competition with the army and he was at uh, one, one of the bases and then there was these bushfires threatening it and he was off base at the time. So then I had to give him a lift to his accommodation or something and then, you know, next thing I know it was like 10 o'clock when I got home. Um, and, and, and I was like, I was too fucking tired at that point. And then last night I was just procrastinating like a motherfucker. Uh, I did try and record and then I just like, bleh. um, so today I, I wrote down, oh, oh shit, for, first off, um, Bridges is... Uh, novella by Kyle Gold um, was released in 2009 I'm pretty sure um, it's the first in the line of the cupcake series from for planet so which other titles are like the peculiar quandary of Simon Knuffus Artile um, Indigo Rain by Rot Martin uh, and oh, and all the other Kyle Gold novellas like Timey Desires uh, Dude Where's My Fox um, Winter Games, uh, Wire and Campbell, uh, other, other, Cohen the Drowned Kingdom, and, um, the other one, are they cupcakes? Oh, Smiling the Hero, I, th I think they're cupcakes, I think all the novellas are, but don't quote me on that, um, I should fucking know that by now, <laughs> so, so, um, so I, I had to write this down. So Bridges is a hot multi-perspective threesome that explores motivations and emotions of the three participants. The latter half explores the matchmaker character Hayward by the two people closest around him of his self-imposed romantic exile. And but the last sentence here, reading it out loud, doesn't make sense. <laughs> Take the wordings off. Um, so I had to write that down because that was the problem I was having. I was like, what is it about? And I was like fucking rambling on. So, yeah, so it's about... So it opens with Emir, who's this cute fanic fox and he's looking to meet someone because he's kind of recently moved to Gateway uh, in the fictional Carl Gold universe of America. Um, I forgot where Gateway was and I was going to look at it on a map, but I didn't. Um, so he's in Gateway, which I think is... Is it San Francisco? I think it's San Francisco. I think it's I, I think it's on San Francisco. Um, <laughs> it's a gateway somewhere on the east, no west coast. That's west coast. Uh, I think. And yeah, so he is at this coffee shop, and he's been he's seen this red fox dude here, and the red fox guy introduces himself as Haywood picks him up and he invites him out to a date and then when he goes to the date there's a f there's another person there and uh, as it goes on this is like kind of like Haywood's Finn like it's a hay date there's uh, Finn who's the other person there is a, a cute swift fox as well and so like Haywood kind of matches people up by taking them all on dates together with himself which is interesting <laughs> kind of I mean uh, yeah well, not, to, not to be detrimental um, it's cool, and yeah, so, so yeah, it, it, the first three parts retell that introduction that leads to the threesome between Finn, Hayward, and Amir, uh, a Fennec, a Red Fox, and a Swift Fox, respectively, and it's, it's really cool, I really love that part where, like, you, you, you've got the, not really sigh, but kind of fresh perspective of Amir and then you go to Finn and you kind of get his motivations and like what he thinks of Amir and and whatever because someone that's more used to this circumstance and then you go to Hayward and then you experience what what the whole background of all that was and and then from there you go into the second half of the novella which explores Hayward as a character and also the character of a person that would do that, initiating hookups and threesomes, like someone that's a, a bridge to people, uh, which is 
what is it called? <laughs> the title of it. Um, it all, I mean, that always is going to feel hokey whenever a, a character in the story or the story references the title of it. So it was, it was hokey and, I mean, Kyle Gold works, like Out of Position, where Dev's talking about the uh, Out of Position play about three quarters away from the book. And same with the, the Isolation play about halfway through that book as well. And then, oh, thinking of other things, uh, I don't think, I don't think they're as obvious as that as they are in the Devon Lee books, um, but yeah, so, and then, yeah, so, going on, so, you're introduced to, more so Hayward's personal life, um, through the, the pe- two people closest around him, so the fourth chapter is a, t- about, uh, Camilla, who's his roommate and quote-unquote sister, which is elaborated on a bit later, and and it's more of a a point in her life, and it's the end of her own personal journey after this event, which she find out about later, and so it's. It's like a double kind of thing, like, uh, like what do you call it when... Um, oh, I'm sure there's a literary perspective where, like, uh, I mean, a lot of characters like this, but they're, they're, she's a very distinct character, which is reflective of Haywood. Um, yeah, so, like, she's moved on with her life, and Haywood's upset by this, basically. And then the last part is to do with this kind of dapper, kind of attractive coyote. He's, he's on the back here. Uh, with his shirt tucked in like a fucking noob. Like square. <laughs> he's, he's got cute glasses and a cute ki- 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 face. And, um, oh, and you got cute me there with his big, big ears. Um, Sadly, Finn is cut off on the front cover and he's got fucking boring old fucking Hayward here. Oh shit, to interject. Where is it? Where is it? There's um, the interior station. Where is it? Uh, not, not that one. Um, uh, nope, not that one. Oh, there it is. Where? Uh, of Hayward and his quote unquote sister Camilla. And he's. Big dumb face. I don't know if I can get it straight in camera without fucking... Look, look how goofy his face there. <laughs> when I flip the page, I'm just like... Dude, I'm Hayward. <laughs> I, just, I just thought he looked so silly there. Like, just picking all these stupid meme kind of quote speech bubbles. <laughs> um, <but> yeah. <laughs> um... But, um, yeah, so, they, okay, so, before I go on to the next part, let's fucking take 20 steps back, and talk a bit about the history, so, my experience with Bridges, I bought the ebook on the Kobo ebook store, because I bought a key Kobo ebook reader, uh, when I was looking at getting e-readers, like, fucking, probably, eight, seven years ago, I was... I think it was, it was probably like 2010, it was, it was shortly, Windsy Games was out as well, so sometime around there, and so, that was when, I, more so Kyle Gold was getting into the ebook market with his furry stories, and he was fi- finding a lot of trouble, like, mind you, this is before Bad Dog Books, I don't know, I'm just gone. it wasn't that long ago, but he was before Bad Dog Books, he was trying to put it out there, and he was finding, finding a lot of criticism, about the the graphic images in the novels. Um, I mean, that was more of a thing with the industry. Well, I remember a couple of write-ups and things around in the day, and I couldn't really talk about it in depth now, but I very distinctly remember that my ebook version, I don't think it has updated ever since, where the interior illustrations are heavily cropped. And so, like, there's the, the one Freakson illustration um, of Hayward, Finn, and Amir, and I think it's just got... A, a bit of the head of, like, Finn, and then Hayward's face, it's, like, horribly cropped, it's, like, completely, like, useless, but I think it was more of a statement of, like, what was imposed upon, uh, their creative work by this publisher, by this store, um, 
and it was yeah pretty fucking gross and um and yeah so yeah i read the ebook like years and years ago um so i was reading it at work same with winter games which i have not read since same with bridges that's one of the reasons why i wanted to read it again because like it was literally been forever and i couldn't remember watch and what i could remember was very warped like i had very odd memories and feelings of characters like uh, some of them have flipped some of them haven't um uh, I'm like I'm not sure if I could go into any kind of great constructive detail about what I thought before rereading it and what I didn't. Um, but I know I, I didn't really like Hayward much. Like I uh, before I read it, all, all I can remember is uh, spoilers. To a negative, like the spoiler climax to the negative point, and we'll reading it through again, it's like oh, okay, now I'm older, wiser, I can see his motivations a lot better. Same with every other character, and also being more familiar with Kyle Gold's work, I can see the stuff he's done. Uh, if for like completely easy call that one, where the one he always talks about, where uh, he he does a lot of work on the start and the ending of a piece to make sure it works well and I looked at it on the sort of micro level where I looked at the start of a chapter and the end of a chapter so it was chapter four oh shit where's the contents page that would be the easiest way A5. I like the start of uh commit his, his quote unquote sister's uh Camilla's uh bit in it uh, what says, um, the calendar said summer was almost here, but only in the last week had the warm, moist air of spring allowed Camilla to open the windows. She smelled flowers from the trees outside, and the mingled scents of the people who walked by, and though she'd been tired of the crowds by the end of summer, for now they made her feel less isolated. Even though the nighttime air was cooler, the freshness was worth it. Then, in contrast, if you read the end of her chapter, um, um, so like the last couple paragraphs, um, the sun warmed her fur out in the street, the door to her building closed behind her with a final hollow funk. At the van, she looked back, to fr though she knew she wouldn't see Hay. He'll be okay, she said. Pin smiled and clasped her shoulder. I'm sorry, Will, he said. He lifted her into the seat and stowed a chair in the back. She loved the way that he agreed with her. It almost convinced her that she was right. And um, so the obvious thing is uh, the effect of summer on her fur, uh, where at the start it's kind of, it's, it's not really foreboding, but it's a different kind of sense. And then oh, the fact where she's talking about being isolated uh, and then at the end of it, she's not isolated because she's with someone that cares about her. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a cop out. I fucking see what you did there, right? <laughs> Finn. Um, what else to talk about? Um, so, like, I still say Bridges is pretty big and kind of Kyle Gold Mythos kind of thing. Like, it's, it's up there. So, like, it, obviously it's up there because, oh, hey, threesome story, it's pretty saucy, pretty sexy. And uh, I know Kyle Golder says this in a couple interviews I've heard. Um, Wherever I could quote it as well as fucking what I remember, I don't know. But, like, Bridges, at least the first half and the latter half, are, are very distinctive, uh, I wouldn't say divides, um... I guess growth in his writing style um where he said like the, the, the prose is so much different and while I can't see it I don't know if I could explain it <laughs> like I'm sure if I sat there and researched it and wrote down fucking notes and wrote an essay and if I can really broke it down I could probably tell you but I, 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 mean, I was reading it for fun, so, <laughs> but I could see it, like, I could see it, like, just, and then, even then, like, I could de definitely see it with, well, obviously, his strongest thing is his character work, where 
these days, there's, I can see him working in a lot more about these characters, conveying a lot more about them, even stronger, um, leaving less to, I guess, ambiguity. Because while I do like uh, Amir and Finn, and even Hayward, I reckon... Even though the story is about Hayward, I would say he's kind of the, the flattest character out of all of them. Like, you've got a good picture of Amir, you've got a good picture of Finn, you've got a good picture of Kinsey, who's the coyote on the end of a recent breakup. And you've got a good... You've got a decent picture of Camilla, but she's, I guess, more of a tangential character. And uh, where, you know, today you could see... Cargo putting a lot more life into her, um, but I, I still reckon she's got more character than Hayward, which I guess is probably why I always thought I had so much hate on him, even though I love him, he's a really cool character, it's just like, even though the story's about him, it's it really is told a lot more about the people around him, um, and you've got the other minor characters, which you... You really only see in the party scene and towards the middle of the story, which are really cool. Like, it adds to the fairy world. Like, uh, the... Oh, God, let's have a get the species right. So there was Vico, the the, the needy young panther, um, who made a scene at the party. There was Boris and Alexi, and Boris was the... Oh, fuck. Was Boris the ermine? Or was he the... The snowshoe... No, Alexi was the... Sn no. Oh, fuck. Who was introduced first? Fuck. That's how I... Remember. Okay, so Alexi was the ermine and Boris was the... The hare. I don't know if he was a snowshoe hare. Um, and then you got uh, Shim, who's his raccoon, who's a fucking bit of a fuck. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like him <laughs> personally. Personally, he was a good character, but yeah, you yeah, got all those kind of strengthening out the world, and you know, these days he'd spliced that out into the greater narrative rather than just in the um, that one scene. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll wrap up. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that. Um, oh, oh shit, so I've been chatting, I guess I've, I've chatted to a couple people over the years, and the one that I'm remembering these days, because it was fucking like a, fucking <laughs> a couple of hours ago, is I was chatting with, um, oh shit, I want to make sure I try and pronounce it right, um, uh, with, uh, Mikasai Wolf, and, um, he, he's a big fan of Bridges, and he was telling me how he he met Kyle Gold, and uh, he asked him uh, what was in um, the box that Camilla tried to give uh, Kyle Gold, which I guess we're going to spoilers now, so I guess I'll wrap up the end with spoilers. So but before I do that, <laughs> if you love it or it sounds interesting, you can pick it up from... Uh, typically, uh, for Planet, uh, it's for Planet Plus titled, or you can pick it up as an ebook from Bad Dog Books with its lovely illustrations by Kyovi. Um, I fucking should have said that sooner. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's a never love so something. I think it's only like eight or ten US dollars. It's not much. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so the big fucking thing is that uh, Hayward doesn't want to move on because his last relationship. Um, his lover died in a cry crash that killed him. Uh, so his lover is an Arctic fox, um, uh, who was the older brother to his sister. I actually, I don't know if he's older or younger. We'll just say his brother to his sister Camilla, who is the Arctic fox that he, he currently rooms with that moves on without him. And during the big argument where she tells him that she's moving out and he fucking can't get over it already, um, she tries, he tries to give her a box of films that's old and been there apparently for the four years that they've been living together, and, uh, and yeah, so, uh, Mikasai, uh, Wolf asked Kyle Gold what was in that box, and, uh, he, he said to him that he confirmed that it was, uh, like, Foster's old stuff, and, uh, you know, like, I've I think the reader can generally guess that, but it's one of those kind of interesting kind of fan things that you want to know, you want that confirmation on. 
and um, uh, I think I, I said to him like um, basically I'm like yeah if you got something like that and I, I joked I'm like that or like Foster's old dildo collection or something stupid like that um, but yeah no um, but it's always fun to talk about like I guess fairy walks fairy fairy works with people because you know the fins touch fins fins touch people fins touch people more than other people fins blah oh shit I'm losing it now uh, but yeah so like oh like I guess like oh man that was one thing so before I read it for some fucking reason I thought Foster and Camilla were wolves I, I, when I, when I saw, when I read that they were arctic foxes, I'm like, how did I forget that? Well, how did I not notice that? Like, how did I fucking just warp my memory? <laughs> I've got it completely wrong. Um, but yeah, so, Bridges, super cool, lovely artwork by Kiyovi. Uh, I totally would recommend it. It has, it has aged well, definitely. Like, um, it's, but it, it has its noticeable differences. But I wouldn't say flaws. I guess the only flaw I would say is just uh, Haywood is definitely type typecast as a red fox. But uh, so this is oh, uh, a shitty edit in here. Um, so I realised tweeting out about my process that I forgot to talk a bit about uh, the whole thing with Haywood and how he how Foster's death affected him and the, one of the ways that Kyle Gold conveys it early on in the story is that uh, when Hayward has his uh, organ because this, this is really weird because it's like um, I, I don't know where to start so like okay so when it, in the threesome from Hayward's perspective when he comes he has he smells or has the memory of smelling pine which he has a strong memory link to foster with so yeah so it's like it's i think it leans more to this which i guess i'll go into where he has a strong link to the ghost of foster well not um uh, what do you call it, like paranormal, say as in dangerous spirits, but more metaphysical uh, and, and more mental in his own head. And yeah, so like, that's one thing I, I'd really like to explore chatting with people, um, but it is, it is there and it is cool, interesting, but really fucking creepy. <laughs> can, like, can you imagine if we were with someone, and then they, they let you know, like, oh, yeah, when I orgasmed, I was, well, not, oh, God, not just thinking about someone else, because that's not that bad, but reliving this tangible memory and link of someone who's deceased. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not horrifying, but it's like, Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit just weird, and um, and like you get what's there, it's explained, and I don't know if it was just, I don't, because he, because he doesn't talk about Camilla having a pine scent, so I'm not sure if it's just the fucking deodorant, that fucking Foster used, or <laughs> it was his natural sense. It's probably his natural sense. Alright, or just the photograph in the frame had that sense. But then, you know, you could say that, well, Hayward bought the frame because it had the pine scent, which reminded him of Foster of the deodorant that Foster used. <laughs> um, but no, like, I, I, it's something I really want to go into. But there's, there's so many variables because it's kind of just there. And, you know, it doesn't fucking mean really much. <laughs> but, like, to, to drill down on it, like, you gotta go through it. Um, but, no, it, it is just a bit creepy, just how, yeah, just how that kind of is. Um, and, uh, you know, that is the big kind of climax of the whole thing, where he, he climaxes and it's not there, and he, he's pretty sad, but kind of moving on about it, and, like, 
I'm fucking the book conveys it better than what I'm rambling on now. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just a bit mm. like there's like the other fucking thing I always remembered when I thought about pris- bridges. Is I thought about how fucking creepy that was. Like you know when he came, he thought about his dead fucking boyfriend. Oh, to put it bluntly. <laughs> Uh, that he hasn't hasn't moved on from at that point. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to tie it up, so I think I might just fucking squeeze it in somewhere, and then you're just gonna cut to me wrapping it up. <laughs> any kind of a, oh fuck! So what? Well, a few fucking things in any cargoes works. There is a definite um, marker on the size of his dick, and it is in. Kinsey remarks that um, Hayward's knot is the size of a tennis ball, and so if you think of that in proportion, then Kyle Gold's characters have above average appendage, or oh, sorry, penis or sexual organ length. But then you could counter argue that with uh, Lee's remark on Dev's cock size in the first out of position book. So I guess make up what you want. All I know is just fucking ouch when I thought about Kinsey taking that knot. It's like, oh. <laughs> but then again, he is a coyote. And they are secretly sluttier than foxes. So, yeah. So I've been Rafer, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>